Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Coming up on the program, Governor Sonwalu Commission's project in Ekbe, Lagos received seven ventilators from China, I will bring you an update on the Ojota Okwebi Link Brig project. Let's get started with infrastructure development. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwalu has commissioned Uluo Fish Market a 960 capacity stadium and also empowered over 1,000 women with financial grants to boost their businesses, all in a bare area of the state. Take a look. <laughs> Residents of Ekwe are excited to receive the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu in their community. It was a challenging task for him to step out of the vehicle or into the large crowd that came out to receive him. The governor is in Ekwe to commission the Oluo Fish Market and a 960 capacitor stadium built by the lawmaker representing Lagos East Senatorial District, Senator Tokumbo Abiru, with the support of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, Adejoke Urelokwe Adefidire, a joint effort for the people. I came into this assignment with a determination and passion to improve the lot of, of our people, particularly Lagos East Senatorial District people, and elevate the socio-economic conditions of our people, and more importantly, complement the efforts of the state government as led by Mr. Governor in improving the lives of our people. I'm happy to report here today that in the area of education, I have facilitated the following key projects we have done Aga Primary School in Ikorodu, which was overstretched due to high enrollment of pupils, and this has been salvaged. I facilitated four blocks of 24 classrooms, equipped with complements of furniture, 16 toilets, and solar power and solar powered board bore and this has greatly improved the learning outcomes in the school. I have also facilitated six classrooms at RCM Primary School. Iwerekun in Ibejuleki. <coughs> in Agoiketu, I have equally done a block of three classrooms at Ajelogo Primary School. In Ikosi Sheri, Ikosi Sheri, I have also done two blocks of classrooms at Isheri Primary School. I have also facilitated one block of classrooms at Methodist Primary School, Okeletu in Ijede. And of course, a, a block of classrooms at Araromi in Bagada. During the COVID, during the height of COVID, I'm, happy, I'm also happy to say that I donated 150,000 nose masks to the primary schools across the Lagos East, East Senatorial District through La Suburb. I, I also facilitated 200 powered street lights at Lagos State Polytechnic in the Korodu campus. The fish market was expanded to accommodate 240 open stores, 80 lockup stores, and five open trading areas that will provide daily income for the people. It is a very important project for us, very important in the sense that we have to empower our women financially, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. And that speaks to some goals of the SDGs. When you look at goal of SDGs, it talks about no poverty, which is goal one, no hunger goal, good well and well-being, good health and well-being goal three, quality education goal four, gender equality goal five, water and sanitation goal six, and uh, of course talks about good work and economic growth. All of Social development of SDG that talks about market development. So that our women will have opportunity of taking good care of themselves, taking good care of their families, and contribute to the development of their immediate community, the local government, and the state in general. The market women are very important to us. They are very important to us because if they are going 
by their economy going through the economic uh, activities, they will be able to take care of their children, they will be able to send their children to school, they will be able to support their husband and take good care of themselves and uh, reduce the domestic violence in the family and in our community and the state. So leaving the market, we have built 346 markets, lock-up shops and the uh, um, stores very close to the jetty so that the farmer, fish farmers will be able to sell their wares and of course we have also constructed the where they can process the fish at Oluwole um, fish market. That one has been completed and that fish that you process in that Oluwole market can be sent, that can be exported abroad. So we are using gas to power it and electricity. And if you don't have opportunity of doing the two, you can power with Shako. Governor Sonwolu encouraged other lawmakers to support the efforts of the state government in making life suitable for the people. Between these two projects, an holistic effort has been made at touching the lives of the people of Epe in particular and Lagos East Senatorial District in general. In addition to this project, we're also today presenting financial grants to over 1,250 women that have been carefully selected from the senatorial district. An additional 200 rural farmers will also be receiving manual planters and financial support to enable them expand and do more in their choosing vocation. This, in my view, is what democracy is all about. It is most practical and most functional. It is about directly touching the lives of the people, empowering them, enabling them to live healthier, to live more prosperous, and to live better as citizens. This is also what our great party, the whole Progressive Congress, stands for. A better life to all our people, to all our citizens, regardless of your age, your gender, your religion, or your income class. Our goal is to ensure that no one is left behind as to spread the dividend of democracy across the state and across the country. I thank Senator Abiru for living up to the ideals of our party and for the legacy in transforming Lagos since 1999 that all of us have been part of. At this junction, <clears throat> let me appeal to all the beneficiaries to see this benefit as a public recourse that they must entrusted and take care of. Spend the grants wisely and productively and utilize the tools that you have been given very, very well. Keep this stadium and the facility here, keep it at its utmost best. The agricultural equipment should also be judiciously used. Bring more money to your pocket and smile to your face and to, the, to your family. This new mini stadium will also lay the foundation of new generations of sporting talent who will put a pair and Lagos State on the world map. The infrastructure development and other social empowerment in a pair will continue. The ongoing re reconstruction of the Eleko to Epe Junction will be completed before the end of next month. <clears throat> the OK Oimbo Marina Road will also ensure that they complete it within the next one to two months. The recreational project comprises a football pitch, basketball and volleyball courts, in addition to the commerce-oriented projects that would improve the livelihood of the people of Itme. From empowerment program to the health sector, for this time the Lagos State Government has received seven ventilators from the Chinese to intensify the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the Chinese team presented the equipment to the State Ministry of Health at Alausa in Ikeja. When the COVID-19 virus found its way to Lagos in 2020, the state government had a tough time battling with cases. While the struggle was ongoing, the Commercial Nerve Center got support from different groups, including the Chinese government. While the cases of COVID-19 is still coming up, China is donating seven ventilators to the Lagos State Ministry of Health to treat patients with COVID-19 virus. The past two years, the pandemic has posed great challenges to the whole world and people suffer great losses. 
the assistance from Nigerian hospitals and medical professionals has helped Chinese communities manage to cope with the pandemic. On behalf of the Chinese Consulate General, I would like to extend my heartfelt appreciation to the excellent medical services and professionals for their care and support to the local Chinese community in the past years. Today, we donate seven ventilators to four of the best public hospitals as a way to show our thanks to the Lagos State, to the Ministry of Health, to the hospitals and medical staff. I'm sure the equipment will contribute to the fight against COVID-19 and benefit more Chinese and Nigerians. With our joint effort, we are certain the cloud will be swept away and bright sunshine will be on every one of us. The state government says the equipment will go a long way in saving the lives of patients in intensive care centers. This is definitely not the first donation the Chinese government uh, is making to, to Lagos State during, uh, uh, in response to COVID. Uh, in the thick of COVID, we did receive uh, quite a few consumables uh, from the Chinese government that have, were extremely useful uh, to us in fighting off wave uh, after wave of, of COVID. And uh, now we're receiving this donation of uh, seven uh, ventilators, uh, ostensibly for, for as part of the response to COVID. But I mean, all of us here that are medical professionals realize that uh, right now we're trying to strengthen our emergency response uh, in Lagos State. And this would be extremely useful to strengthen ICUs uh, all across uh, our general hospitals. So this is something that we, we will definitely use very wisely and very gratefully. Uh, those also who have any dealings with provision of equipment will know that uh, ventilators are not cheap uh, equipment. They, they cost quite a bit. And so for uh, the Chinese government to, con to deem it fit uh, to provide us seven of them, uh, we really do uh, need to express uh, our gratitude. Medical professionals in the public hospitals will also be trained on how to operate the equipment. These seven units of ventilators um, donated today will be installed and uh, staff will be trained by Africa Med and Aeon Med after the donation. Um, Africa Med with its mission to improve the healthcare system uh, by establishing uh, a healthcare bridge between China and Africa. Um, while Aeon Med is the biggest uh, manufacturer of intensive care and theater equipment in China, um, both of us have specialists and engineers based in different African countries, uh, inclusive of Nigeria. Uh, and we offer the training and after-sales support uh, for the, uh, uh, you know, our respective equipment. As the Lagos State Government acquires more sophisticated equipment to upgrade facilities in the public health sector, Residents are being advised to continue to practice safety protocols and cope the spread of the deadly virus. Well, finally on the program is the Ojota Okwebi Link Bridge, which the Lagos State Government says will be delivered in June 2023. This is according to the Special Advisor to the Governor on Works and Infrastructure, Aramide Adeoye, who made this known at the project site. Zadu, he says the ongoing Ojota Kwebi Link Bridge construction is a legacy project of the current administration, which is aimed at decongesting traffic in the Keja Axis and the Kurudu Road, and also will set a precedence for Ojota commuters to link the third mainland bridge. On January 26, 2022, the Lagos State Government flagged off the construction of the Ojota Kwebi Link Bridge to address the traffic challenge often experienced by commuters on this axis and to shorten the travel time between Ojota and Ikeja. Six months down the line, construction equipment aligned along the 3.89 km project length with local and foreign engineers engaged to get the work done.
The special advisor on works and infrastructure overseeing the project is on site alongside the Commissioner for Transportation, Information and Strategy and all the stakeholders involved. We are cleaning the border hole, we are cleaning the bentonite suspension and then we start to, to place a reinforcement cage. It's been a challenging start to the project considering the type of soil on the land space. The piling is about 1.5 meters in diameter. The project manager gives other details. We have started uh, works on uh, 1st of February 2022 after we had the uh, design preparations on this project. So this project is challenging and very important for Lego State because we are connecting the axis from Ojota to the Maryland together with the Opebi area. So and this will allow to release the traffic from the Maryland area so Lagosians can move very easy without uh, to stay long time in traffic. Therefore, we are considering to, to construct uh, two bridges. One bridge is connecting the area of Pebi with the Mende, we are calling it the uh, Odoyaro Bridge. And the second bridge is connecting the area from Ojota to Mende. Between these two bridges, we will have uh, link roads and everything is connecting to the existing Opebi road, which we uh, have in our scope to reconstruct and uh, also to, to increase uh, to two lines on each uh, side of the carriageway. So the challenging um, point of this project is that we, are, we have very difficult terrain. This is uh, the most uh, dewatering point of Lagos, so all the water is coming from uh, Ikeja area and is guided through the lagoon. So we have a very swampy area. We have bad soil conditions up to 20 meter depths. Therefore, we were forced to execute very detailed soil investigation up to the 40 meter lengths on each bridge axis to make very detailed pile design in order us to save also construction time. And uh, that's uh, the point that we started now with today, we uh, commence our piling works after four months of uh, preparations. We have done 60 boreholes up to 40 meter depths. We have done uh, 100 CPTs, cone penetration tests, up to 25 meter depths. And uh, here I would like to present shortly our sequence of works. So we are going to work with two rigs on both bridges. To, to shorten the construction times of foundation to the three months only. On site we have 270 people for all the works what we are doing. So our scope of works is uh, piling works, we have concrete works, we have uh, bridge beam production works with pre-stressing. Our bridge beams will have a length of 30 meter and uh, they are pre-stressed. The weight of each beam is 55 tons. So we will bring very big crane for the lifting operation. It will be the 300 ton crane. And therefore, of course, to, to lift uh, such heavy load within the swamp requires also appropriate uh, preparation works. The piling process is expected to last three months, while the bridge will be delivered June next year. This aspect of the work will be done for a period of three months. That's on the main bridge. The main bridge is the main bridge connecting this junction back towards Opebi. There are two bridges. There's the one from there's one from the main expressway down, and there's the one that actually connects from here back to Opebi, aside from other MSC walls and other connecting roadway links. Um, all in all, the total estimated construction period will be for 15 months. So we are hoping and praying that by May, June next year, the contractor will be finished with this. It's an accelerated construction, and then also with precision. They've explained to you that they've done extensive borehole investigations and when you do that, it shows that you want actual, real precision. What is unique also about this is the size of the, of the, the bulk piles. What you have averagely around here, if it's not over water, if it's not a bridge over water, you would have ideally use a 600, a 900 by oil one meter. So in Penn Cinema, we have used diameter one meter. In um, regional road, we have used one meter. But here we are using 1,500 mm. So that speaks to something. Um, is there a soil condition that you need to critically look at what kind of, and really indeed the soil here, the terrain is very bad. Uh, so that's why you have to do carry out extensive soil investigations, which the contractor has done together with the consultant, uh, Mrs. AEC. So all in all, I think we're good to go. You can see all of the piling layouts, what they do each day. This is done already on axis. We're working right 110 and they will move back to 900. 
The contractors also told us that they will set in the second reef to begin to do the smaller for the smaller bridge section um, next week. So that speaks to accelerated construction work. So what in all, what are we saying? As a government, we had four legacy projects that we said we were going to give the citizenry. The regional road, um, Okwebi Mende Bridge, the Fort Mainland Bridge, as well as the Lekki Ekwe Expressway. Lekki Ekwe Expressway is about 95% done, um, which we have just a pavement. In another, in another four, hopefully in, in two weeks, the construction work, the pavement section will be done, leaving only the ancillary furnitures, the street lights, because even the foundations are all ready. So that is almost at 95% construction work. The Fort Mainland Bridge, we are desirous of actually hitting construction, beginning of construction work by end of the year. The regional road is also ongoing, and this also we hope to deliver to the Gaussians, to benefit the Gaussians by, hopefully by May, June next year, with this accelerated pace that we have set out for ourselves. Um, so we're, we're good to go. That speaks to the termination of this administration to deliver what we have promised. Um, in terms of the quality of work, well, this is not something that we are toying with. We haven't, done, uh, we haven't done this kind of heavy construction work for bridges apart from Lekki Koyi Bridge um, eight, ten years ago. So this is similar to what you have in Lekki Koyi Bridge. So, and of course with the contractor, um, they, are ISO, they are ISO certified. You can expect the world-class standard that you will get. Even in terms of concreting, the bentonite slurry, the rigs, the health and safety observations, the rules, I think that will, will do um, justice, the contractor will do justice to the work. The Ojota Okwebi Link Bridge will widen option for commuters to connect other areas of the state. What this project will be doing is to um, connect a community to um, Ojota. So for example, when you look at the people in Ikeja, and if they want to go to the island, um, a lot of them have to navigate through um, Mobalaji Bank Anthony, uh, connecting Maryland, or to take Kudu at Abiola. So what this project will do is to allow them to connect Udoyalo, uh, Udoyalaro Bridge. And I remember that this project is in two phases. So the first one is connecting to Udoyalo, uh, Udoyalaro. The second one is going to connect to Ugudu. And so people will be able to connect uh, the Todd Mainland Bridge and then head to the island. So what this will do is decongest um, Mobology Bank Anthony, which is always congested in the morning. That's a very important route to go to the airport. And it would also decongest uh, Kudu Atabiola. So it gives people options um, to actually navigate from Ikeja to the island. And uh, I mean, when you look at what is currently having, uh, happening, uh, people in Ikeja spend about two hours to get to the island. So with this connection, we can cut it by an hour so that people can get uh, to the island within an hour. And that's the, impor I mean, that's the importance of this project. Apart from that, it's also a regeneration project. Um, it will create a lot of jobs around here. It would allow industries to co-locate here to use the infrastructure and then um, create more jobs for our people. So it's not just a linking project, it's also a regeneration project for our people. It's not just the road that is getting attention of the government. The waterways are also not left out. Lagos deserves to have a ring road. By the time you have a ring road and you can take the traffic for people who are on the island around um, VGC that, that want to go, that actually want to go to Korodu and get out. You don't have to take the whole hog, congest yourself, come on the third mainland bridge. All you need to do is connect on the fourth mainland bridge from that VGC for, uh, and then act on the, on, the, on the bridge itself all the way down and bust out at Ikorudu. And then possibly to connect at Rikishawo and bust out. So we're creating options, exits for people to, to go. Um, so we are strategic in the way we think to say, for us as an administration, these are four legacy projects and they have a meaning. They speak to something, to say the Fort Milan Bridge to carry off that traffic, the regional road to take to take this to take this traffic in the early early and land on the Fort Milan Bridge and then get out. This one to take the traffic coming from Odota out here and out. The, the construction work that we're doing presently now on the other part of Okwebi Bridge itself, there's another construction work going so that you can take traffic away from the main junction of Kudra Tabelawi, and then some we have work on the main Okwebi road itself. While Lamata is also doing the road and all of the bridges on the Keja towards the airport. This administration, we are building several jetties. Several jetties, the construction for some of them, in the, in the coming months, the commission of most of them will begin to, to, to commence. Like I said, 
we are presently about to commission Ishuti Road. Ishuti Road has, at the end of it all, a jetty, which is supposed to, is supposed to start, the construction work is supposed to start any moment from now. But when you come from Ishefun Camp Davis, there is a jetty already in place that people can use. And when you take it, you can just connect either to Ogun State or you go through Agbara. There is a new jetty constructed now by the, it's called the VIP Charlie in Badagri. That jetty is done now, ready for commissioning. There is a jetty at Ojo on Ojo side, towards the tank farm jetty side. So there's one construction work already done there. So there's another jetty that comes out from uh, Malaba, Alaba International Market. The whole idea is give people options to go on the waterways, reduce the pressure on the roads. The Lagos State Government says is adopting a modern day construction method to deliver the Ojota Okpaibi Link Bridge without resorting to the demolition of structures. All in a bid to provide safe transport solution for Lagosians. And this is where we call it a day on this week's edition of the program, Dateline Lagos. As always, thank you for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. Until we come your way again next time, remember to always stay safe. Bye-bye.